Hello everyone, welcome back to the class examination of the Paladin class. Originally this was just going to be about devotion points, but then I realized it would actually be a lot more sensible if I talked about not only how I usually run devotion for the Paladin, but also talk about some of the ways that I build for some of my classes. So the devotion, I'm going to use this in air quotes here, devotion, video is actually going to be split into two parts, and it's not just about devotion. It is about how I typically build these and the devotion as a result. So I'm going to talk about my four most common broad builds when I run Paladin. And I say broad, but you can see here that I definitely have some favorite pieces of equipment. I will also show you the skills that I usually build with these as well, but these are the four most common, and these, I think, are also some of the builds that a lot of newer players will see first, and even a lot of players new to the class, even if they've played Grim Dawn for a while, new to Paladins, they'll typically see these items come up and wonder, well, how do these actually fit together? While I'm not covering everything here, I'll be, like I said before, I'm going to be covering the rest in a separate video, the kind of non-standard paladin builds that I like to run. These four will be my more common. Now, I decided to start right off the top with a the most unusual of my four builds, mostly so you can really understand how a little odd uh, the videos, the videos, the builds in the next video will be. So, we're running with a two-handed, we're running the Flamekeeper set, and this is really a fantastic personification of running just plain old fire away, fire at will. Now, the empty spots here that I've got here, these are like the rings, the amulet, the metal, and the gloves. These are slots that I typically reserve for equipping with green items that are going to enhance my resistances because obviously the stuff that I usually equip for this build obviously leaves a lot to be desired in resistances. And keep in mind, I'll actually cover this later, hold on for a second on that, but the Flamekeeper's set obviously does a lot with Bursting Round, Virus Might, that's not a part of the Flamekeeper set. You've got the whole Flamekeeper's set looking at those two particular items, so obviously you go for these. Now you'll notice that I really didn't go into Righteous Fervor here, I absolutely could have, but I usually use a very specific strategy here with this build. I'm going to talk about that, and also when you might want to use Virus, not Virus, my Righteous Fervor. But anyways, uh, I usually run the Anchorite's Leg Armor, because it does give me Arcane Empowerment, and Rebuke, and the reason why Rebuke is fairly useful is because I usually will run Gaze of Empyrean. Now, Gaze of Empyrean obviously is going to give me Aura of Censure, which is really nice. Now, you might wonder, well, why not go all the way to Divine Mandate? You've got the physical, you've got the fire damage. There's a couple of reasons why. First off, since the Flamekeeper's set actually increases Vire's Might, and Vire's Might as you can see here, 286% of your weapon damage. When you're running a two-handed, even a two-handed gun, that is a lot more damage than a single-hand weapon is going to do. So Virus Might, even though you're using a two-handed gun, Virus Might still really slaps. Okay? That's still a ton of damage that you're doing, especially when you tack on Volcanic Stride and Tectonic Shift. That is a large amount of damage flying in your enemy, and with the quick recharge here, you can see here that's a, a negative, you're, you're reducing the recharge by 1.2, you've got a 3.6 total recharge over here, it's, it's very potent, if you really want to go hard into the fire, you can throw a point in here for volcanic might, give you a little bit of uh, knockdown, give you fire damage, sometimes I'll run this, sometimes I won't, it really depends, because obviously fire is the primary method at which this is done, but you've also got a lot of built-in conversion as well, but there is, I typically equip, of course, like I said before, the Gaze of Empyrean, which increases physical damage, so it really depends on my mood. Um, typically, typically, Volcanic Might is a little better, but it depends on what other green items I have. For example, if my gloves really increase physical damage, and I happen to equip them because they increase my resistances to where I need them to be, then maybe I won't convert Volcanic Might. I, I'm sorry, I won't use Volcanic Might. It really depends on what your other pieces of equipment are, but it's a pretty safe bet to run Volcanic Might, so we're just going to leave this point here, but I left it empty so I would specifically remember to actually mention this. But this is a very potent ability. Even if it doesn't normally occur to you to use this with a two-handed gun, 
it's extremely powerful. Now, the reason why I don't usually run Righteous Fervor is because, first off, now I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, okay, so we know we're running Vire's Might. Vire's Might is very strong with a two-handed gun. We're getting into melee range. Now, this isn't too big of a problem because, first off, Bursting Round does very well in the melee range. It explodes, and as a result, it's going to hit everyone, or, well, most everyone around you, right? You've also got Word of Renewal to heal you all the way up through Steel Resolve, which I typically use to enhance my resistances, which, as you can see here, my Aether and Chaos, well, my Chaos resistance is fine here, my Aether resistance is not. So that does help there. Uh, and you've, of course, got the healing here and Word of Arms for increased energy regeneration. Not that that's terribly important, really, overall. Um, but you're, again, you are running Virus Might. You have this nice 3-point second skill recharge. It costs 100 energy a shot. And I've never really had an energy problem, but that's just me once again. This is, if you're going to run Word of Arms, it's mostly for that 6-second cooldown, uh, six less second cooldown, just to make this come up a little bit faster, uh, and you're gonna have a really delightful time there. You know, you're gonna be healing yourself more often, that's what you really want. But since Virus Might put, puts us in melee, Aura of Censure is actually a little bit more useful here. First off, the Flamekeeper set is already looking to do fire damage, which this does. Second off, again, this is an aura around you, it's reducing enemies' damage, it's doing the fire damage, you're already getting into melee range with Vire's Might. It overall, I find, is more effective than Divine Mandate, especially since I usually run Inquisitor Seal and Arcane Empowerment, and it's just 10 more points to jump from here to here, whereas with Oathkeeper, at minimum, you're running at this point, and that's an 18-point jump, which is far more points and quite problematic. But yes, I'll usually run Inquisitor Seal here. This is to help keep me alive while I'm in, you know, melee range. This increases my damage, of course. That's a really good time. Of course, ranged expertise is to increase my auto attack speed. Now, the reason why I don't normally run Righteous Fervor is because I'm usually running Ascension. When you're going into melee range, specifically with the express purpose of slapping people with your gun, basically, you're going to be in some potentially sticky situations, and Ascension really helps with that, as does Clarity of Purpose. Now, Keep in mind that there's a couple of addendums here. This is typically how I'll build up, right? But, I've recently been finding that Clarity of Purpose, of course, isn't too useful. Now, there are, again, situations that I'll run Clarity of Purpose for, like Rashulka the Mad Queen is my primary example. It's my go-to example. Um, if I'm playing alone, this also makes a little bit more sense because reducing your Petrify, Entrapment, Freeze, and Stun Duration is pretty important in single player because if you get entrapped in any way with any of these in single player, you're probably going to die. If you're playing regular, this doesn't matter, but if you're playing hardcore, Clarity of Purpose actually becomes a necessity, in all honesty. The offensive ability increase can be nice if you decide to splash a couple of points into Deadly Aim. You know, you've got two points there, which I left open to just demonstrate that you can, you know, have a little bit of leeway here. I also left Presence of Virtue here. This is more out of habit. This is also because the internal trauma dance, uh, the internal trauma dance? The internal trauma damage and bleeding damage can be very nice, but, again, if you're not playing hardcore, this isn't necessary, and you can go right into Righteous Fervor here. And if you really don't want the extra damage from Presence of Virtue, which frankly, compared to Righteous Fervor, is fine, you can absolutely go into this, go into Consecration if you really want. I don't normally go into Retribution, just because I really don't have that much Retaliation damage. You can, don't get me wrong, you can actually eliminate Inquisitor Seal if you really want. You can actually run this a slightly different way. You can get rid of Inquisitor's Seal, run this this way, right? And then you can use your remaining points, or, actually, if you're feeling particularly spicy, you can run this this way. Now keep in mind that the point here... No, that's all set. Now, the reason why I've left some points here in Vigor is because that is bonus health. Again, that is reduced entrapment duration, which is pretty important for single player. I typically tend to play single player. 
uh, well, I can't say that, 50% of my gameplay is single player. You could also go into just Deadly Aim if you really want to, and just not go into, you know, more than just Word of Renewal. It's totally up to you. I want you to understand that just because I build a particular way doesn't necessarily mean you have to, nor is my way necessarily the best way. Sometimes I'll build things because they're fun. I really enjoy clarity of purpose in very specific contexts. I'm an addict to presence of virtue. It's a flaw of mine. Righteous fervor overall for damage purposes is better than presence of virtue. It's just, a, again, something I am just consistently use. Deadly aim I don't often use. It is really nice when I do use it, but I usually have a purpose there. I am fond of Inquisitor Seal, so I typically tend to build that. But I want you to understand that at the very least, bursting round, ranged expertise, word of renewal, aura of censure, and Vire's Might, as well as, at the very least, Ascension. Ascension is very important to this build, to this setup, because, again, you are dashing into the enemy and putting yourself in danger, which is also typically why I find an Inquisitor Seal very useful, and also why I typically boost Word of Renewal all the way up to Seal Resolve. If you want to drop Clarity of Purpose and Presence of Virtue for some points into Righteous Fervor and maybe even up to Consecration for the attack speed, the elemental resistance, and the armor, that's totally fine. You can do that. I don't typically... But sometimes I do, and I will concede that it probably is, in the long run, more effective. But don't underestimate Vira's might with a two-handed gun. It absolutely can slap, all right? Now, for Devotion, I've actually set this up in a very odd way because I want you to understand that when you run this particular class, you've really got two options. You've, you either can really focus on the physical and kind of sub-focus on the fire or vice versa, right? So right here, I have an example where I've completely focused, well, I've more heavily focused on the physical and internal trauma side of things by going into Ulrin, getting that physical and internal trauma damage up, getting that bleeding damage up, which, again, Clarity of Purpose is really nice for, you know, a little bit of extra bleeding damage. And the reason why bleeding damage is important to the build is because between the fire elemental damage and the physical damage that you're doing, it can be a little tough to eliminate certain ethereal enemies because they're going to have the really good physical resistance and they're going to be resistant to your fire damage. There are situations like this and sporadic random fire-based heroes from various other factions, but there are specific, you know, groups of enemies, the fire ethereals, most ethereal bosses are going to resist you pretty heavily, but they don't really resist bleeding damage, which is why I go for Clarity of Purpose. This is why I consider Ulrin very important. But again, if you don't particularly value that, if you really want to go hard on the fire damage, you absolutely can. You would just simply drop Ulrin here, you would drop the Magi, and you would grab Olzawin's Torch. You would go into the Spider instead of the Magi, that'll put you up to 15 points here. Drop. Actually, we can do this manually here. If you want the fire damage over the physical internal trauma damage build, you drop this. You, uh, uh, we can't, we can't remove that yet. Hold on. We remove the magi, right? We go into the spoder. Remove this. And then we just need some more points here. And we just go into this. And then we go into this here. Now at this particular point, Obviously, you can't fully go into that. They've got the points over here that I've just randomly thrown into this guy. You can put them here. Maybe you want to go into this crossroads for the 5% extra health. That's totally up to you. Maybe you want to splash in some here for the, uh, the attributes here. That also works out quite well. Totally up to you. This is typically how I build, though. I usually will go into the Vulture not only because it gives me 5 red, but it gives me some really good resistances that you'll notice originally were a bit lacking, as well as some good attribute points. Uh, the Spider is kind of the similar thing, where we've got nice attribute points, we've got offensive ability, more importantly, we've got attack speed here, which is nice. Got some cunning there, we've, of course, got the fire damage out of Olswin's Torch. Now, the Hydra is pretty important to this whole thing, because ranged weapon, increased offensive ability, damage and attack speed. Oh, by the way, we can actually remove... Oh, you're going to be a problem, aren't you? Okay. Um, just as a point in reference here. There we go. I'd forgotten I put the point here. Um, you can also pull this out. The anvil is really just to get the five uh, purple to get to Ulrin and get some really nice armor absorption. You obviously can't use Targo's hammer because you're not blocking anything with a two-handed gun. 
I left, I put that in there for a very specific reason that I'll talk about later with a different set. But with this set, it doesn't really make a huge difference. And then you can just obviously go somewhere else. You could even put these points into the Magi if you really want to. That is totally acceptable. Actually, we'll go right over here. And yeah, what the heck? Or you can go here or you can go here for the attack speed. That's totally up to you once again. Totally your choice. Uh, if you really wanted to, again, you could also just pull out this point from the owl since you don't really need that purple. Go here. You have a couple of different options there, right? So you could absolutely go that direction. I do typically pull the hammer anyways because, again, maybe I want to go with Ulrin. I just knocked over some stuff on my knee. Maybe you want to go with Ulrin. Maybe you want that. But either way, you do have some physical and internal trauma damage in uh, Volcanic Stride. I'm sorry, not Volcanic Stride. All the way up to Tectonic Shift. So I typically do splash in the hammer regardless. The Lotus really helps with your word of renewal because obviously you've got the healing effects increased, which is really nice. Energy regeneration, which is pretty nice if you're you know, totally up to you. You've got the Dryad for healing. If you really wanted to, you could splash into other things. For example, Lizard is a little bit of a cheaper healing buff here. Healing effects increased by 6%. Not quite the 10% here, but, you know, you do have that option. But for the most part, I stick with one of these two constellations, Ulrin or Ulzwin's Torch, when I'm running classic Paladin builds, which are a combination of fire and physical. So, with that being said... That's typically how I run this. And again, I use this for Arcane Empowerment. There are other pants that increase other skills. All of them epic, all of them level 94, that increase different combinations of skills that you can pick from, right? So you do have those options. Actually... Yeah, hold on. Uh, no, we'll just leave that for now. Um, but you do have a couple of options. I, for example, this, Word of Renewal, Presence of Virtue, as one example... Uh, there's one other pair of pants that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. But the rest of these slots, once again, I must reiterate, you would typically use to fill in the missing resistances here as you go. Uh, but you have all of these wonderful options here with this. Now, keep in mind the devotion points. We're going to be coming back to this because this is fairly standard devotion points for a lot of the classes, that a lot of the builds that I'll be talking about here. But this is the melee version. Now... You'll notice I've actually combined two sets here because they actually work really well together. And this is what really sold this build to me, really. Uh, first off, you have the Stone Guard set, which has obviously this very heavy in, uh, focus on physical damage, internal trauma damage, and then also the Stone Father, which once again we see the use of um, Volcanic Stride, but this time we're definitely leaning a little bit more on that physical and fire, I'm sorry, that physical and internal trauma damage. Here we have with Mythical Leg Plates. We've got Presence of Virtue Steel Resolve here. I forgot to actually mention this, but I use these boots a lot with Paladins because they just have really great stats. They really help my resistances out a ton. Steel Resolve is something I like to build. Presence of Virtue, again, I like to build. The Rune Guard is incredible. 50% reduced entrapment duration is always a good time. I very often build these on Paladins. I build these on anything that uses these any of these combinations here. I love these boots. Uh, anyways, back to the point, Stonefather Bulwark, we've got Righteous Fervor here, which we'll talk about in a hot second, we've got good old Shattering Smash and Retribution, we've got the Stonefather Mark here, now, for skills, the only thing I pull out of this is honestly Word of Renewal, that's it, I'm not even joking, this is all I run here with the Inquisitor, this is almost completely a Oathkeeper build, Yes, that sounds kind of cheap, but honestly, Oathkeeper is pretty strong, so if you're really looking for an intense Oathkeeper experience, and you're you're not really looking for, um, you don't really care what the second class is, right? This is a really great build to run, because all you really pull out of the Inquisitor is a heal, which is the Word of Renewal, so that way you can actually use Resilience intelligently, and healing effects increased by 37%, right? And you really go gung-ho. Now keep in mind that, again, this, while it does inflict fire damage, right? I'm sorry, it's primarily the Stonefather uh, set that does that. Well, it does inflict some fire damage, its primary focus is definitely on the physical. So we are not converting 
Volcanic Might over into fire, pure fire damage. We of course are running Shattering Smash. I typically run Smite as well because we're already here. We're already auto attacking. Notice that I've got 18 stinking points here. If you want to put this into Ascension, if you want to put this into, for Pete's sakes, maybe Aegis of Men here, maybe you want to go all the way to Vigor for the increased health. You can do that. That's totally fine. You have all kinds of options. Maybe you want to run Deadly Aim. Um, or, or Eye of Reckoning. But this is much more of along the lines of a pure streamlined uh, Oathkeeper, very, very Oathkeeper heavy. Again, if you're looking to just play Oathkeeper and you really don't want a secondary class, honestly, just grab the Inquisitor, pick up Word of Renewal, run Resilience, and you're golden, in all honesty. Now, this is actually a build where Presence of Virtue actually is a little bit more important because between spending energy on Virus Might and spending energy on Righteous Fervor, which costs 8 per auto attack. And again, you're wielding a single hand weapon, so you attack pretty quick. That can get a little out of control, especially when you start uh, running, you know, Word of Renewal. You're healing every 15 seconds. That can get a little intense as well, energy wise. So, Presence of Virtue actually makes some difference here. And all this really does is prevent you from needing energy potions. I mean, yes, I typically run Haven here, it's boosted by the set by the build. It increases your healing effects, it increases your shield's effectiveness, it increases your health, which is also why if you uh, why I stated you could really increase your health with vigor here. That's actually why is because Haven absolutely slaps. Uh you could go into Guardians of Imperium if you really wanted. You have all kinds of options, but it's it is more of a oh, I really want to play Oathkeeper and I don't really want a secondary uh mastery. Grab Inquisitor, grab Word of Renewal. That's all you need. And this is pretty pure. I didn't put the Devotion Points in here because I've already put them in over there, but I just wanted to reiterate that Ulrin is where you really want to go. Actually, we're going to go back to this and just really quickly talk about that. But just where I had it set up before with Ulrin, with the Anvil, you would just obviously not have the Hydra because it would be a two, you know, the two-handed damage output there. So we can actually, I think we can pull this out really quick and just have ourselves a grand old time. Hello. There we go. And just pull this out. Don't need any of this. Uh, we don't really need the Vulture either, in all honesty, so we'll go ahead and pull that out as well. Hello. We still want the Magi because we still are doing some fire damage, and it is really nice to just have that there. We actually have a shield, so we can actually use Targo's Hammer. We've got all that physical and internal trauma damage. So we go ahead and throw... And the last points I'll usually throw into Rowan Scepter because you actually have a mace equipped with this little setup. Where you want to go from here, it really depends. Right? You can go here, you can go here, is where I typically go. You get your extra armor, that's fine. Actually, you can pull out this red here. Boom. Row one scepter. Right? Fantastic time. It's a lovely thing. But, you do have that for this build here. Right? And again, primarily physical, primarily Oathkeeper. Really great build. Uh, it is, I will point out, that this took me forever to actually put together, and I actually didn't build like this until I realized I could effectively merge the two sets together really beautifully. It, it pretty much accidentally happened where I was swapping equipment with a family member, and this, not the Stoneguard Pummeler specifically, I think it was the, yes, it was the Stone war, Stoneguard Ward and the... S the stone word the stone father mark had been dropped together and i realized looking at them hey i think these work together i wasn't 100 percent sure at that point so i went into my inventory and this was before i lost my inventory at the end of 2020 unfortunately but i went into my inventory and i looked at them and i'm like yeah these work so boom here we are um i played with it for a little bit with my then completed um Paladin, my level 100 Paladin at the time, it was a really great time. Um, one of my more favorite builds for Paladin, despite the fact that it has almost nothing to do with Inquisitor, <laughs> but it is a really good time. And the really nice thing is, if you've been paying attention, you really can convert this into a lot of other secondary classes. I am talking about the Inquisitor here because Paladin video, but you, I'll, you'll see this build again with other masteries. You absolutely will. 
There'll be adjustments, you know, what other items are equipped will change, obviously, but you will see this again. But again, the empty slots that you see here are used, once again, to fill out the resistances that are left kind of open by the equipment here. Next, this is typically how I'll run a two-hand, a two-handed, a dual-wielding pistol paladin. Now, I'll usually run the Luminari set, and you'll notice that there's a lot of, you know, ranged expertise, all of the... Um, special ammo types are run here. I specifically use uh, the Anchorite's leg armor, although you absolutely could use mythical leg plates. There's, I remember that the other pants increase Order of Conviction. You can also use these here. Um, you've, of course, got the Rune Guard uh, Greaves, of course. Lovely. Uh, I also will almost always run this as a permanent piece of equipment because it increases ranged expertise and righteous fervor. Now, right... Did I just wipe that out? I did. Shoot. Um, alright. So, I'll pop over here. Now, we've, at least, I already talked about the equipment, but really, with that set, I was using ranged expertise, bursting round, that was a button on my mouse I clicked, by the way, chilling rounds, storm spread, using Inquisitor's Seal, all the way here, Arcane Empowerment, Aura of Censure, and using just Righteous Fervor out of the... Uh, righteous, yeah, just Righteous Fervor out of the, um, Unpresence of Virtue. Head of Oathkeeper was all I ran here. Uh, and the reason why I ran Inquisitor's Seal and Aura of Censure is, first off, Aura of Censure is reducing elemental resistances across the board, which really helps all of these elements here. Righteous Fervor, because obviously you're already auto-attacking, so auto-attacking with Righteous Fervor and dual-wielding pistols is a really magical time. And then the arcane, the Inquisitor Seal plus Arcane Empowerment was because you want, to some extent, to be melee. I ran a character with this, but Storm Spread actually hits a single target more when you're there in melee range. Because this normally spreads out really far, and it typically is supposed... The, the intention is to hit a whole bunch of enemies for some bonus damage. But if you're in melee range, all these projectiles hit one target, and that is a lot of damage to be doing. So, melee is actually a good thing for this class. Now, if you want to put a single point into Virus Might so you can close that distance, you can. Uh, it's something I have done before. Um, but it is a very excellent time. Now, there is a devotion point here with the Luminari set. And that's that I don't typically go anywhere near Ulleran. I don't care about Ulleran at all. And I'll actually use this empty one here. What I'll typically do is go very heavily into Ulswin's Torch, because obviously Righteous Fervor does do fi extra fire damage. Yes, it does physical damage, but really the focus there is fire. And you've got Ultos, which is what we're also going to be striving for here. Now we'll go into this, and let me see. Um, typically I'll actually, I won't necessarily always go into the Fiend. Usually I will because it does increase my fire damage, does give me, oops, uh, some other stuff, but the ghoul is something I very commonly go into when I run the Luminari set with Paladin, mostly because ghoulish hunger is incredibly potent with that. It's, you know, 80% of your attack damage converted to healthy. You're really, with the plus 22 attack speed, you're really blasting a lot of shots off. And with the 80% attack damage converted to health at max level, this is absolutely huge. This will save your life a lot. Especially if you're in the Inquisitor Seal, where it's absorbing a certain amount of damage anyways, and boosting your damage... They're going to heal even more. It's a really potent combination. So now we're going to go into the spider here. Go into this. Now whether or not you go into the quill is totally up to you. Uh, let me see. What do I normally go for here? I'm having a mild brain cramp. Get out of there. Yeah. Uh, I do remember I usually go into this for extra elemental damage. Uh, because that's just absolutely lovely. What el What am I missing? I'm forgetting something. I know I'm forgetting something. That's not it. What am I forgetting? Well, anyways. Go into this. What we're really also looking for here is this. Go ahead and run this. Now, you can run this, or you can go into Sailor's Guide. It really depends on if you want to go into 
Word of Renewal with the Luminari set. I typically don't. Actually, I should reflect that. I typically don't. So I usually actually go into this. Silly me. Go into Ultos. Now, it's important to prioritize Ultos first because he does reduce elemental resistances across the board. We do have the option already, obviously, of going into good old Ulzwin's Torch. And then the rest of your points, maybe you want to go into Slayer's Witchfire. I typically do go into Slayer's Witchfire for the extra, you know, fire resistance down because, again, Righteous Fervor does bonus fire damage, so you want to bring that fire resistance down. So this is typically where I take this. Pull this point out. Use the last two points for whatever. Uh, you want, just throw them in whatever. It doesn't really make a huge difference. But this is usually how I'll run the dual-wielding setup with the Lum based on the Luminari pistols and the Elite Coven shoulder guards. Again, the rest of the pieces of equipment for the Luminari set are primarily used to fill in the resistances that are lacking. Um, but this is, again... This is fantastic, and this is actually one of my favorite builds because it actually uses the Devotion Points the best, in my opinion. Uh, because you can run both Ultos and Ulzwin's Flame, and you can really do a lot of damage. And Ethereals aren't quite as much of a problem, because not only are you reducing their elemental resistances with the Danger Noodle, you're reducing them with the Hand of Ultos, and you're reducing them with the Eldritch Fire. Also, the reason why I really like Flame Torrent with this is because there is just a splash of Chaos Damage, which is really effective against Ethereals a lot of the time, and you're reducing that with the Eldritch Fire, which itself does Chaos Damage. It's not something, obviously, you can focus on. Like, I'm not recommending you go into Flames of Ignifar, because that's absolute insanity. That's way too expensive point-wise. But it is a really nice little pop of damage that Ethereals really don't like. And Ethereals are going to be your main threat with the Luminari set in a Paladin build. So, once again, absolutely fantastic build. Really great use of Constellations here. Um, it's, ba it's just the Luminari set plus the Elite Coven's Shoulder Guards that increases Righteous Fervor and, I think, Ranged Expertise. And the rest of the equipment is just whatever whatever green items fill in your resistances. And, of course, the the famous boots of Rune Guard Greaves. Um, so, you've got that. Now, the last build I want to talk about, we can actually get rid of this because I accidentally wiped that thing, is Pistol with Shield. Now, I usually use the Stronghold set for this because, frankly, it just is plus two to all skills. It already has, you know, the built-in pistol with shield going on here. It's a really great time. It increases fire, physical, and internal trauma damage, which you'll love to see. You can r I usually run Gaze of Empyrean for those same boosts, and, again, I'll usually run Aura of Censure. This is something I primarily use in single player. It's very important to make the distinction. This does not work as well in multiplayer because you're using Aegis of Men here, which means you're going to be pulling a lot of aggro. If you're in a multiplayer situation and you're running with a pistol, you probably aren't intending to draw aggro. You can. If you want to use this in multiplayer and be a pistol, uh, a pistol shooting tank, you can do that. I just don't recommend it because there are better options. But this is something I'll typically use in single player. Draw their attention with Aegis of Men here you know, blast them, get them in close with the Aura of Censure. Now, the reason why I don't typically use Inquisitor Seal with this, besides Inquisitor Seal taking up points that I want elsewhere, is because between the shield boosting, the ability to stun people even in melee with the Aegis of Men here, and the dominant heal with Word of Renewal plus Resilience down here, I often don't feel the need. I'm not as threatened, especially since you, when you consider increased armor here from Consecration. It's just less dangerous than the other setups that we've talked about with pistols. Because with the Flame Keepers set, I build Inquisitor's Seal because you're deliberately going into melee, and you're obviously not armed with a shield, so you're at risk. This is not the case for the Stronghold, what I call the Stronghold build, because you not only have a shield that is a very impressive shield, but you have resistance boosts here of Pierce and Vitality specifically. And furthermore, you actually are ranged the whole time, technically speaking, and you only get more dangerous when they get into melee range of you because you've got Aura of Censure. You're throwing out your Aegis of Men here. You throw this. This doesn't bring you to them like Virus Might does. This brings them to you. So even after you throw the shield, they're all stunned. You know, your, your five 
victims are stunned, and then you're shooting at them while they're stunned, or you're shooting at the other guys that weren't stunned that are approaching you, you've got righteous fervor going on, you've got bursting round going on, you've got insane attack speed, you've got the concussive round from this, which also potentially stuns, you've got the bonuses from Sanctus Crest, which is a huge amount of resistances, you've got a huge increase to your shield stats there, shield block chance, shield damage blocked, you've got safeguard, of course, which I don't have here, but you could absolutely drop Presence of Virtue for, as is an example. You can run Safeguard if you want, which one you, you choose is based on your preference. You, of course, have increases to ranged expertise and righteous fervor, right? You've got all of this going on. You've got Gunner's Aegis to increase your health, do more damage. It's just absolutely incredibly tanky, despite the fact that you are running a pistol with some specific pieces of armor. And again, these empty slots are for filling out for whatever is going to fill out your resistances, but you can even see here your pier your piercing. You're going past 80% on your elemental and your pierce resistance already. I mean, only by default, only your poison and acid is going to need really intense help. The rest of these are at least decent from the get-go, and boosting those up even further is insanely easy. But you just don't need Inquisitor's Seal with this, especially if you run Safeguard. That's extra armor right there that you, you know, again, don't really need. Now, the reason why I typically run Presence of Virtue is, again, not only do you have the heal going on, you've got energy cost on the Righteous Fervor with a single hand weapon, but you're also chucking your shield all over the place. Now, an argument against this is, oh, I've got Reprisal, that might be cheaper randomly, which is true. In retrospect, probably Safeguard is the better of the options here. Um, I need to really get off of the Presence of Virtue addiction I've got going on here, because I just now am realizing, hey, I use this way too much. <laughs> My goodness. But, you really don't need Inquisitor's Seal with this, where you do need it with the two-handed weapon, because, ah, yeah, I've got no shield, I'm running at you, and now I'm in melee range with a gun. <laughs> I mean, it's self-explanatory why you would want Inquisitor's Seal there, but this is the version, basically, while you're trading off some damage because you're not using a two-handed gun, you are much tankier. And between this one and the two, you know, the Flamekeeper's build that I run, this one's probably better for hardcore. If you're really interested in taking a Paladin into hardcore, this is probably the build that I would take into hardcore if I was hard-pressed to do so. Um, but yeah, that's... This is an absolutely fantastic build. I think... I think this is my favorite build thematically to play, because it's one of the- this- the Paladin is one of the few classes I will use a pistol and a shield with, um, quite honestly, because no other class pulls it off quite as well, for the fairly obvious reasons of Inquisitor being really good with pistols and the Oathkeeper being really good with shields, and I think even though this isn't specific to the Paladin class specifically, it is. It just embodies the class so beautifully. It embodies that combination of masteries so wonderfully that I really do love playing this this particular build. It is one of my favorite builds, which is why I saved it for last. This is absolutely an, a fun time to play. Now, before I conclude this video, I do want to talk about two other sets really quick that have very similar vibes that I didn't actually construct here because of their very similar vibes. By the way, for Devotion, remember when I had this built up over here? Let me actually go back over here. Remember when I had this built up? There were some points in Olorun, and there was some points in Oswin's Torch to really emphasize, hey, you can do either of these. Yeah, this is a very similar situation. Obviously, you wouldn't have Rowan's Scepter. But you honestly can go with either Olorin or Olzewin's Torch here, whichever one you prefer. Uh, it depends on where you want to focus your damage. But, you know, either is fine. Pick your favorite and run with it. Um, I'll typically, with at least the Pistol and Shield, with the, the Stronghold uh, build, I will usually go for Olorin, mostly because it's really easy to just slap an Assassin's Mark, get that decreased physical and pierce resistance, and ha take advantage of that with Ulrun. If you really, really don't want to focus on the fire damage, you want to treat the fire damage as secondary, you can wipe the Magi and the Spider, and you can go into the Unknown Soldier instead for just a single point here. Let me actually exemplify this. 
if you really want to treat the fire damage as secondary to pretty much everything else you've got. This is really easy to range. You bust this out, and you go really hard into this. Right? And there you go. And you still get the advan you know, the benefit of the anvil because you actually have a shield to block with. Right? But you can absolutely do that. If you really want to, you can also go into the scales here. That's just... Yeah, it's vitality damage, but you've got the attack damage converted over to health if you really want. That's an option. I don't use it that often. You've also got, of course, the crab down here, which gives you physical damage, internal trauma damage, and elemental damage, which, of course, leans a little bit more into the fire. It's just a really marvelous time. And even with this, you can still actually very easily go into the spider here and just splash a couple of points into my boy here, right? You can still run some fire damage. You're not maximizing the Mage Eye, obviously. But you still have enough points there where you can get a little bit of fire damage out of him and not have a problem, right? So, absolutely fantastic build. I love, I love this build so much. Anyways, to finish up, the two other sets that I don't really, I didn't specifically cover is Virtue's Light, we're talking Aegis of Men here, here. Now, the only real difference here is that if you want to do a... Kind of like uh, uh, this here, the stone the stone build, I guess I'll call it. I've never actually named my build before. Um, it's kind of a weird feeling. I've just always been like, oh, the build... When I build around that set, it's usually how I refer to it. So, I'm naming them for you to make it a little bit, I don't know, easier to remember. But the Virtues set really just emulates the, stones, the stone build just you would use Aegis of Men here more heavily, really. Ascension, of course, just for defensive purposes. I mean, it, it's not too different. It's basically a combination of the Stronghold build and the Stone build. Just you're not necessarily locked into a pistol, right? And there's obviously more pieces you can collect here. And then Octavius, very kind of similar situation here. You've got a shield build but it increases Rune of Kalistor and Aegis of Men here. Now, this is my least favorite set to play with. I've only played with this a couple of times. The reason why is because I find the use of Rune of Kalistor with Aegis of Men here redundant. I don't remember if I mentioned this two episodes ago. I find this redundant because the runes stun. Aegis of Men here stuns. That's a lot of stuns, and yes, it makes it very difficult to approach you, but on the other hand, all you're really doing is the problem with Rune of Kalistor in that context is they only really last once. Yes, you can put down Runes of Kalistor while the, the enemy is in melee with you, but that slightly defeats the purpose of the stun. You typically want to be throwing them out there and having the enemies walk into them and blasting them, but the actual point of this set is to throw out your shield, have them trip your Runes of Kalistor, throw your shield some more, put down more Runes while they're stunned. Basically, it is a weird race... Of putting, of eliminating the enemy through a combination of thrown shields and continuously replace runes before they get to you. It's a really weird, I find it a bit stressful to be honest, because it's, play with the set yourself if you don't believe me. You will find yourself eventually devolving into this bizarre race mentality where you're throwing, you're putting down your runes of Kalistor, and then to initiate the fight you throw your shield. The enemies trip the runes, Get stunned. You're madly replacing runes. They start moving from the stun of the runes of Kalistor. You throw your shield to stall them. Place more runes. They run into the second wave of runes. You're replacing those runes between you and them. You throw another shield and they can move again. It's a really bizarre race against time, and it does not work well against bosses. That is my main... That is my second main problem with this build, besides not being fun to play for me personally. It's terrible against bosses. The Rune of Kalistor is fine against bosses, don't get me wrong there, but Aegis of Men here is really underwhelming in a boss or a single target situation, a dueling situation. It does not work as well because it really is intended to bounce from target to target and stun a whole bunch of enemies. It can't really do that in a lot of mono a mono fights, and you're, you might be thinking, well, think about all the bosses that summon minions or adds or whatever. You're absolutely right, but think about all the ones that don't. Think about those situations where you get into a fight, and there's an enemy hero just amongst the regular guys. You wipe out all the regulars, and now it's just you and that hero, or you and that nemesis, right? 
it's it's ineffective enough in those situations where I don't like playing it. It's already not fun for me to play personally. I don't find it that effective against single target fights. I don't like this build. I don't like this set. I find it unnecessary um, and redundant. But that's all I'm really going to say about the Octavius set. Now, this particular armor set I do like with Soldier. Don't get me wrong. It's fantastic with Soldier. Specifically, Soldier Oathkeeper, but that's a conversation for a different class. I don't like it with Paladins. I suppose I should put that caveat on there. I don't like this set, the Octavius set, with Paladins. I find it unpleasant to play, and I find it ineffective against mono -a mono situations where it's just you and one enemy. It's very bad in these situations. So, with that being said, I hope this really helped you understand some of the more common builds for Paladins and what kind of what kind of things you can do with some of these sets. I will be doing another episode of this, the penultimate episode of this series, where I'll be talking about some of the more unusual builds I have played with Paladin. You know, those things not a lot of people are going to think of when they think Paladin. I'm talking about Poison Acid, I'm talking about Aether, and I'm talking about Cold Damage. Alright, so you've got that to look forward to, but thank you all very much for joining me on this uh, weird little escapade. And um, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, please ignore me. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, or suggestions, please leave them down in the comment section below, and have a great 24 hours.